tailgaters, Ross of the Pigskin Tales podcast here. The buzz of summer and the anticipation of the college football season is in the air. It's the perfect time to gear up with Homefield, a premium collegiate apparel brand based in Indianapolis. They have over 150 plus college designs to choose from, each one showcasing a unique part of your team's history. My personal experience with Homefield has been exceptional. Their apparel is comfortable and their vintage designs bring back fond memories of my alma mater. So as the excitement for the upcoming college football season builds, make sure to visit Homefield's website at homefieldapparel.com. Get ready today for the upcoming season and represent our favorite teams in style with Homefield. Again, that's homefieldapparel.com. This podcast is part of the Sports History Network, your headquarters for the yesteryear of your favorite sport. You can learn more at sportshistorynetwork.com. Hello, sports fans, and welcome to another edition of Yesterday Sports on the Sports History Network. Today, we'll have part three of Why I Miss 1970s Football. And before I point out some aspects of the game that I think have improved, I still have a few more complaints. Instant replay. There are a few things about the game that drive me crazier than instant replay. Instant replay started out as a good idea, used on truly controversial plays. Now it's used to create controversy. More controversy means more revenue, and the announcers play into it even though they know it's ridiculous. Why? Because they don't want to bite the hand that feeds them. John Madden was one of the few announcers who would not play into that. He wasn't afraid to point out when an interference call was just nitpicking, and when a replay was unnecessary or taking too long. There's supposed to be a time limit on replays, but they never abide by it. Replays should only be used for truly controversial calls, and they should have no more than one minute to look at it. If you don't see conclusive evidence to overturn the call in that minute, the call stands. That's the way it should be, in my opinion. I don't need to see the same play replayed over and over and over again from 10 different angles. It's boring. Make a decision and let's get back to the game. The rule book is probably twice as long now as it was in the 1970s. The rules are far more complicated than they need to be. Once again, I believe this was done to create more controversy. The rules of what constitutes a catch are ludicrous. It seems like there is a review every time a receiver catches the ball. If a receiver has possession of the ball, meaning the ball never touches the ground until he hits the ground, it should be considered a catch. It shouldn't need to be more complicated than that. The playoff system is overdone. First, I think seven teams from each conference are way too many. I think five is more than enough. Four might even be enough. I never liked the idea of a 9-7 and team getting in the playoffs, much less a team with an 8-8 record or a 7-9 and record. The way I see it, it kind of makes the regular season meaningless. Winning your division with a 9-7 and record or maybe even an 8-8 eight and eight record, simply means you are in a lousy division. I think you should need to have at least 10 wins to reach the playoffs. Next, we have kneeling for the National Anthem. It's upset a lot of people and made a lot of people angry. While I would never suggest we deny someone the right to protest, do it respectfully. What the players are protesting has nothing to do with the National Anthem. I think it's very disrespectful, especially to those who have served this country. 
Many have died serving this country and defending that flag. There are many ways to protest injustice. I don't think disrespecting our national anthem is a very respectful way to protest. Next, we have Dome Stadiums. They started playing NFL games indoors in the 1970s. The Houston Oilers were the first to do it, followed by the New Orleans Saints, the Detroit Lions, and the Seattle Seahawks. I didn't like it then, and I don't like it now. Today, numerous teams play in dome stadiums, and almost all the stadiums from the 1970s, and even earlier than that, have been demolished. The two I miss the most are Metropolitan Stadium, where the Vikings played, and Memorial Stadium, where the Colts played. The Baltimore Colts, that is. There's just something very wrong with a team like the Minnesota Vikings not playing outdoors. Now, before you think I'm just a grumpy old man who's complaining that things aren't the way they used to be, I'd like to point out some aspects of the game that I think have improved since the 1970s. The two-point conversion. I like the decision to add the two-point conversion. I think it adds more excitement to the game and I'd like to see it used more often. I also like the fact that they have made the extra point more difficult. Next we have artificial turf. Don't get me wrong, I'd still like to see all the get on real grass, but at least the synthetic turf they're playing on now is better than what they were playing on in the 1970s and 1980s, which was basically concrete with a carpet on top of it. Many careers were cut short by having to play on that surface. The worst ones were the stadiums that were used for both football and baseball. Players would get their cleats caught in the cutout seams and patches and tear up a knee or ankle. Helping those in need, as much as there is to criticize the NFL and its players for, one thing they have always been good at is helping out those who are less fortunate. I think today, even more than ever before, the league and its players are giving back, and they should be commended for it. It's good to see the NFL taking injuries more seriously than in the past, especially concussions. Too many former players have suffered, and still are suffering, from injuries and concussions they suffered while playing. They were not taken care of as they should have been. Hopefully that is changing, and today's players will not have to suffer as their predecessors did. The concussion protocol is a step in the right direction. No player should be playing with a concussion, as they did years ago. Perhaps they didn't know the long-term dangers of concussions years ago, but they do now, so I'm glad to see they are taking it seriously. I'm also glad to see advancements in the medical field with respect to knee injuries. A serious knee injury in the 1970s was many times career-ending, or at the very least, it shortened your career. Today, thanks to better surgical procedures and advancements in rehabilitation, a player can come back from a serious knee injury. If you're a fan of 1970s football, you may have the same grapes I do. If you're a fan of today's game, enjoy it. I'm not trying to convince anyone they shouldn't watch it. I'm just stating why I don't. I try to watch it every once in a while, but I usually get bored after 10 minutes. So if you're like me, go to YouTube and find a game from the 1970s, the golden era of football. You can also purchase my book titled Reliving 1970s Old School Football or The NFL in the 1970s by fellow Sports History Network podcaster Joe Zogrzewski. Both books are available on Amazon.com. 
Okay, that will conclude our three-part series on why I miss 1970s football. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you, and God bless. This podcast is part of the Sports History Network, your headquarters for the yesteryear of your favorite sport. You can learn more at sportshistorynetwork.com. Hey there, Sports History fan. This is Arnie Chapman, a.k.a. the Football History Dude, and I wanted to thank you for stopping by to listen to another episode here on the Sports History Network. Our podcasters are passionate about uncovering and sharing sports stories from yesteryear. And if you didn't know it already, we have over 30 shows across the network covering all sorts of sports history topics. In fact, here's a glimpse into one of our awesome podcasts here on the network. Hello, football friends. This is Darren Hayes of the Pigskin Dispatch Podcast, and I'd like to invite you to the portal of positive football history, Pigskin Dispatch and PigskinDispatch.com. We talk about everything that centers around the game of American football, expert discussions, the origins of the games, the great players, teams, and coaches, and more, and some great guests and insights from experts. We have new episodes three to four times a week, and you can find us on SportsHistoryNetwork.com, PigskinDispatch.com, or your favorite podcast provider. How about that? I bet you're super hyped to go listen to that new podcast, right? Well, to learn about this show and all the other podcasts on the network, head over to sportshistorynetwork.com forward slash podcast. Again, that's sportshistorynetwork.com forward slash podcast. Head over there today to find your next favorite sports history podcast.